Alright guys, what pretending to be disabled looks like. Let's check it out. And the world had its eyes on Spain, hauling 107 medals in the... It's the 2000 Sydney Paralympics, and the world had its eyes on Spain, hauling 100... Okay, the Paralympics, guys. ...seven medals in their most successful Paralympics ever. And especially for the intellectually disabled basketball team, dominating Russia in the final game, taking home that gold. But as soon as the celebrations began, and the team's picture was splashed across newspapers throughout Madrid, people stared back in amazement. Because these weren't the faces of intellectually disabled athletes, but rather professional basketball players cheating to win the Paralympics. What? Who let them in, bro? You said they're professional basketball players. Well, let me put this light in the background. There's, there's no way. <laughs> I can't believe that. What? There we go. If this sounds f***ed up, it's because it is. And soon, one of the biggest cheating scandals in sports history was a- Bro, I never even heard about this, guys. Until this video- Video- This video just pops up on my feed, guys. And for good reason, like, what is going on? About to break. Now to some, the Paralympics is inspiration porn. To others, it's witnessing athletes overcome their disabilities. Or it's about what every other sport's about, winning. Let me be clear, the Paralympics is not a consolation prize. It's an elite level competition with athletes Whoa. who train for years just to qualify. Man, they're going fast. And they have a disability. But there lies a question. If all Paralympic athletes- Dang, my heart goes out to these guys, man. Because, uh... Yeah, it's tough being disabled. Athletes have a disability. Wouldn't the least impaired one always win? Yeah. So to make the competition as fair as possible on an even playing field, all athletes are medically and performance tested to see if they- Man, if they're tested and stuff, how did this guy get through, man? I had a whole team of them get through, bro. Whose bright idea was to even uh, do something like this? They can qualify together. So for example, an athlete with paraplegia is going to compete against someone with a double knee amputation. But then, what if an athlete held themselves back during testing on purpose? You know oh my gosh, bro. Straight up lying like... They're like dependent it on, on it or something, guys. What is going on? You know, like blowing lightly into a breathalyzer. Well, a few years back... During the classification of a paraplegic hand biker, the doctors there discovered that his lower back muscles were twitching. And then like a miracle from God, the man could all of a sudden walk. After he confessed that he had borrowed his friend's wheelchair the day before the event because he wanted to see how far he could go. And of course the- What? No, that's all bad, bro. I can't believe this thing- something like this is going on, that man. That was kicked out. Or went on, bro, rather. Oh, he's got the silver play button in the background. Nice, nice. Guys, we're gonna get multiple silver and gold play buttons, hopefully, because that'd be amazing. Oh, but what if we'll have it in our room, everything, guys. If you were to fake an intellectual disability, well, for decades you couldn't. The so he like probably like practiced or something. That's so scummy, man. Paralympics was strictly for athletes with a physical disability, and the Special Olympics was for athletes with an intellectual disability. Until this guy came around, Fernando Martin Vicente, head of the Spanish Paralympic program. Now, Fernando was instrumental in getting the intellectually disabled class added to the Sydney Paralympics for the sport of basketball. Now, this was a groundbreaking decision that had never been done. It always had been for decades. Intellectual disabilities and physical disabilities were completely separate. Uh, it was his idea to merge things. Separated. And hopefully Spain wouldn't f*** it all up. Now, Fernando's cushy job was very simple. More wins and gold medals meant more government funding for his Paralympic program. And while Spain was pretty dominant in most of the Paralympic sports, their new basketball ID team, I'm gonna be totally frank, they weren't too good. That year, they lost a string of minor championships throughout the world, and Fernando tried hiring new coaches, new... Yeah, sorry, sorry, this video's laggy, guys. Uh... I'll reset my computer and hopefully it'll be fixed. Training regimens, rotating the players, but it wasn't working. So feeling that he's exhausted every measure to improve the team before the Paralympics, he tells himself that just this once, he's gonna bend the rules a little bit. So in secret, finds among, you know, friends of the coaches to include four players who did not meet the disability requirements, but would raise the competitive level of the team to win. Oh man, 
Why? Just why, bro? Literally. I, I, I'm... I'm just in awe, like... Why would you do something like the, this, man? It's silly. So he puts the four players on the team, and they win the Brazil 98. They then win the Poland 99. And then he gets real ballsy and... Dang, he keeps winning, man? ...fills the entire team with non-disabled athletes. And of course... What the heck? So there, he's like, yo, you just gotta pretend you're disabled. So... Is he winning money from this, guys? He wins the Iberian Cup in Portugal. And for a team that was now losing, they were now dominating left and right. But you may say, Vince, this isn't even... That would bring up red flags, right, guys? Come on now. Just keeps winning and winning. It's silly. Even the Paralympics yet. Why was Spain already cheating like this? Now, remember the funding that was for his program? Well, that money was also embezzled into his non-profit, the National Association of Special Needs Sports. Fernando had received millions and millions from the Spanish government that he had used to make himself a multi-millionaire, all through this little non-profit. Now, with his humble beginnings as a school Dang, bro. Well, teacher in just five years of Bro, I had a get-rich scheme. Get-rich-quick scheme, but that's not the cool... That's not a cool one, bro. It's a pretty nefarious one. Starting this nonprofit, he owned five wineries, three estates, a sports club with the bull ring, a yacht. You see, more gold medals wasn't just funding for his team, but for himself. But like all criminals, Fernando convinced himself that he was doing this for a good cause because some of that government money would help out the disabled, even though he was taking a huge portion of it for himself. But Damn, bro. I mean, that's like every corporation CEO ever. That's besides the point. But uh, I, I was looking for something to add to that, but... Uh, that's just how it is, guys. But even worse, Fernando now felt that he couldn't win at all without the cheating. He had become addicted to it. Now for the Spanish... Uh -oh. back is he going to take it to the next level or something, man? Basketball ID team, a team of 12 players. He was going to take to the Paralympics two players that were actually intellectually disabled. The other 10 were gonna be the fakers, the guys that fluffed the game. So you gotta wonder, who the hell were the other 10? He had an engineer, he had an attorney, he had a writer, he had two college basketball point guards and five semi-professional basketball players. And together with the promise of a free trip to Australia. Hey bro, a lawyer that, that he knew that is good at basketball, okay. He had hundreds of thousands of dollars in sponsorship money. They were gonna rig the Paralympics. Now, in Fernando's eyes, Spain was guaranteed that gold medal until the plan started falling apart in the second quarter of the first game. You see, Spain was up more. Oh man, he's gonna get caught red-handed. Is this gonna be like te on television as well, guys? He's gonna be like, "Yo, hey, he's not disabled." Wait, did he did he like create fake identities for them or something? More than thirty points against China. They were playing so hard, the coach had to call a timeout, sit down the team, middle of the game and say, move it down a gear or they're gonna figure out you're not disabled. During the day, the team was winning, dominating, and at night, the team and the coaches would celebrate at Australia's hottest nightclubs while they would leave the two intellectually disabled players alone in their hotel room all night. And when- Wow, uh, that's sad. Straight up partying at clubs and stuff, man. When you really think of- Somehow this didn't like a- uh, And this is- This sounds like it's fiction, guys. How does something like this just go along? About that. That's so f***ed up. It's the final match, Spain versus Russia. They have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything they've ever wanted. Now, while Spain had to hold back for other teams, Russia made them work damn hard breaking a sweat because Spain almost lost the game. But I said almost. Dang, bro. Because they beat Russia 87-63 and Spain starts popping bottles, celebrating. They're signing sponsorships left and right and they capture the moment on film for the world to see. But as the team flew back home to Spain, rumors began to swirl online because some of these players in their victory picture looked a bit too familiar. Oh, the guy, he's a, in the far left, he's an attorney. What the heck is he doing at the Olympics? He's not mentally disabled. Uh -oh. No way. Remember that writer that played on the team? Well, that was Carlos Ribagorda, an undercover journalist. And just one week after the win, he blows the whistle on the entire scam of the Spanish Paralympic team. And the world is absolutely... Bro. Wait, he was on the team? Blown away. Oh my god. The Spanish Federation did not hesitate to sign up athletes with any type of disability. Besides taking my blood pressure, there was no medical or mental testing. So corrupt doctor forced documents to prove he were mentally disabled. Spain simply wanted to win more medal. 
I played pickup basketball, and when a friend offered me the opportunity to play on Paralympic team, I took the opportunity to write an expose. Spain did not just use non-disabled athletes in basketball, but also track, table tennis, and swimming. Damn, bro, this guy had a whole s cheating empire, man. What the heck? Now, in Carlos's eyes, there was one person to blame for this entire thing, Fernando Martin Vicente. But definitely not himself, right? He was exposing the conspiracy by participating in it for over two years. He had nothing to do with it, right? Yeah. Uh, just now he decides to write the hit piece, guys. After he made a bunch of money. Oh, man, this is getting sticky, bro. He, he, just, he just decides to casually wait, I guess. I don't know. Now, immediately, the IPC and the Spanish government would open up massive investigations into this entire scandal that wouldn't end for over 10 years. Now, Spain would be ordered to give all of its medals back, and for the two... Dang, 10 years of investigation, guys. Or 10 years of... Uh, investigating 10 years of stuff. Players that actually were intellectually disabled. Man, I can't even imagine the pain those players must have felt. And now, Russia would get the gold medals, right? You would think, you know, they lost the second game. Well... See, the Paralympic Committee investigation found that every country had participated more or less in similar frauds and cheating at the Paralympics. Let that one sink in real quick. No way, so they're just the ones that cheated the most, guys. Real quick. Some countries had used athletes with... Even the USA, guys? ...dyslexia, claiming they were intellectually disabled. Australia admitted three of its players weren't even disabled. And Russia, they couldn't even prove their players were disabled. So if you look today on the IPC website, it actually lists no one for the gold medal winner. Russia would never get the gold. They couldn't even prove their own players were disabled. <laughs> so after having this... Dang, bro, what is going on, man? This is just sad. ...class, intellectual disability, for one year, they decided to ban it for nine. Now, online, you read about this scandal. They always portray Carlos Ribagorda, the guy who went undercover, as a hero, the guy who revealed the dark truth. Snaps and claps for Carlos for cleaning up the Paralympics over here. But let's really think about what he did. He pretended to be disabled for two years to write one article. Yet, he... All right, like, what, what is he? Undercover journalist going for two years, guys? <laughs> I think he, was, he just wanted to cash in a lot as well, bro. And then, then he goes and exposes it, and then the whole Olympics get, like, er overturned. He never recorded any conversations. He never took any photos, documented absolutely nothing. Like he signed an NDA or something. Why didn't he come clean about this earlier? His choice to reveal this whole thing last minute has caused so many athletes to not get sponsorships, scholarships for nine years. And what I think's revealing is that Carlos to this day has said nothing publicly about this story. Because why did Carlos choose to expose the team only after people started recognizing their picture in the newspaper? Well, here's my whole theory. Carlos was in on the whole scam. He was there to make money. He was there to cheat. But once that picture started getting people's attention, he realized, well, sh in order to save myself, I need to expose the team before the scam exposes me. One of the great unknowns still. Damn, bro. See, it. see, you see, you see stuff like this happen often, right, guys? To this day is why did any of these 10 players agree to do this? Only one player has ever said anything about this and everyone else has shut up. Now, the team was allegedly told that this was legal and normal. They would be on the Paralympic team as collaborators and that it was normal to mix teams of disabled and non-disabled players. To that right, man. That's a scam. To balance the game and that this would be more like social work because all the money that was won would go right back to the disabled, even though it went right back in Fernando's pockets. But that's besides the point. But like, how do these players justify this trip to their family? Like one of these guys was an attorney. Like, how do you justify to your firm? Like, oh, I'm... Oh, right, like, yeah. <laughs> For two weeks to go play in the Paralympics. And the thing I think is so dumb. Like, what? We gotta find out what his excuse is. Is that really, do they add that on those, uh, kind of IDs or something? What the? They used their real names. Like, how stupid do you have to be? <laughs> and no one found out, guys. What? What? Well, they're Spanish, so that, that says a lot. Now, when the scandal broke, Fernando sat on the board of the IPC and so many of these nonprofits that focused on intellectual disabilities. And immediately after this thing broke out, he was forced to resign from all. Hey, that he should be. He should be. Now his.
What's up, Faze Fluffy? This case would take 13 years to finally go through and be charged with fraud. Now, the prosecutor was asking for two years in prison for the fraud, for the embezzlement, for the embarrassment of the Spanish people. I mean, this is like the one of... Dang, bro, imagine waiting for two years on a case, or 13 years on a case, bro. We recently watched a video where this guy waited 10 years, but I don't think he was locked up the whole time. Because it's not, it's like a white collar crime. Then you don't want to cheat in. Though Fernando had one comment to make about Carlos. Carlos, who has been in the basketball team for two years, has played in the tournaments, won the Paralympics, but then 20 days later says that he is not disabled. If he was not retarded before, now he is. If someone does something like this, Translated quote, wow. He used a word like that, man. They are disabled. Fernando's words, not mine. But on the day of his sentencing, he pulled up in his brand new BMW 7 Series, walked in the court, and he was given a 5,400 euro fine. And everyone else in the scandal was let off the hook, and it was a picture-perfect ending. Now, today, Fernando still lives life as the president of his nonprofit that still receives millions from the Spanish government for intellectual disability. He Dang, bro, this guy... I guess he's a smooth criminal, guys. What is going on? He owns all of his properties. He's traveling around the world. He's living the life. But I wonder if all of the people he's helping out really know about what he's done. I just ended like that. No real outro. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out Vince Vintage in the description. My art goes out to the two members on the team that were actually disabled. I had no clue what was happening. Same here. They truly tried their best and deserved their medals. They did, bro. As an autistic person, I was shocked at how cruel they treated their actual disabled team members. I know, right? Leaving them alone like that. Like, literally, literally. I'm, I'm pretty ashamed of what, what just went, what I just read, guys. Like, you know what I mean? I'll see you guys next video, okay? Peace out, everyone. Thank you for the support. We're getting close to, uh, yeah, 5,000 subs pretty soon. Later, guys.